Just back from a memorial service down at the church for Dr. King. They asked me to sing a little something. You know, I, I was there, you know, yeah, back in 1963, and I remember it. It was like, it was as if we were all one people, one nation under God. You get the picture, right? And now, well now it's the 21st century, and people are still asking me the same question. What's it like to be me? You know, there's all this talk of the new Jim Crow and Black Lives Matter. <laughs> you know what? I know what they're really asking. They're asking the same thing they were asking all those years ago. What's it like to be African American? as if I would know anything else to be. And it's not that, it's just that they want me to speak for an entire group, as if one person could. All right, I'll give it a try. Martin did it. He spoke to thousands, changed the hearts of millions. Got shot, though. I suppose at my age, a little rest would do me some good, huh? <laughs> well, let me start at my beginning. Me, Thelma Edwards. I was born in Macon, you know, down south in Georgia. <laughs> About 1947, 48, nobody was really keeping that close a track at the time. My mother, she worked across the track raising someone else's little girl. She's an educated woman, though. She taught me to read and to write and to think. And when my mama wasn't around, my grandmother took care of me. She, she had this thing about um, stories. And all the time while she was sewing and knitting and sewing and knitting, she would tell me stories. She would tell me stories about our people and our place in the world and why we keep going. <laughs> She taught me a poem, made me memorize it, about who we were. Let me do it for you. My soul rests in your river, mingling with the souls of slaves and the souls of royalty. They are the same. They come from everywhere to, to see you, touch you, but never know you. Never know the mother tongue. Within the confines of walls, you are not there. Within the songs and hymns of former slave owners, you are not there. Your soul rests in the river, mingling and freely flowing. You are there. I am there also. And, well, I guess that kind of says it all. I mean, Every time she would do that or, 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 or tell a story, yeah, she'd go into one of those, those spirituals. Got so tired of hearing those songs, I didn't know what to do. But you know something? People love those songs. They, and everybody knows them. Got to the point, I eventually put one in my cabaret show. Like this one. Sing along if you already know it. Swing low. Sweet chariot, coming for to carry me home. Swing low, sweet chariot, coming for to carry me home. I looked over Jordan and what did I see? Coming for to carry me home. A band of angels, they were coming after me. They were coming for to carry me home. You gotta swing low, 
sweet chariot coming for to carry me home. Swing low, sweet chariot coming for to carry me home. Carry me home. Carry me home. And then. I would follow it up with some fancy storytelling of my own. Well, you know, something my grandmother taught me. This one was a particular favorite. This is called Mabel and Adam in the Garden of Eden. Once upon a time, my grandmother would say, once upon a time, there was this colored woman running around the Garden of Eden. She was a fine looking woman. Big tits, tight ass, no waist to speak of, no children to yell at either, nappy-headed as she could be. Now, this colored woman, she was looking for her snake, Adam. Adam had this tendency to go where he wasn't supposed to go, and on this day, Adam being Adam, he was someplace else. Now, this colored woman, well, let's call her Mabel, See, she was in a bit of a hurry because it was St. John's Eve, and she was to be the presiding queen at that evening's festivities. But now Mabel knew that all the old voodooines, they would laugh her off the premises if she showed up without her snake. Well, technically, she'd be powerless. <laughs> so Mabel ran through the garden, searching high and low, because in those days, snakes could fly. Adam? Adam! She yelled, I'm going away. Well, she was trying to shame Adam into putting in an appearance, but it just wasn't to be. So, Mabel, being true to her word, she walked for days. Finally, she came upon this place. She thought it must be the end of the world. It was a, it was a barren looking place, uh, just a few dusty rocks, no trees, no flowers. Well, Mabel didn't much like the looks of this part of the garden, so she decided to hightail it back to familiar terrain. And just as she was taking a step in the direction she'd already come, she heard a voice. Bonsoir, madame, comment allez-vous? Well, she looked at him in utter disgust. What do you mean you're a homo sapien too? Well, Mabel never did pay much attention in French class. Have you seen Adam? Oh, uh, oh uh, uh, je m'appelle Adam. Well, where is he, and what's he doing out here, and what are you doing out here, and, and uh, well, what happened to your skin? Oh, his skin was, oh, I guess the word I'm actually looking for is white. Well, anyway, he started to walk off, and she followed him. One can only assume that um, she thought he was taking her to Adam, which, of course, he did. Six years go by, nobody heard from Mabel. But finally, on the seventh St. John's Eve, back she comes to the garden with Adam. Everybody looked at Adam. Mm-hmm, yeah, uh-huh, yeah. Commenting about his paleness. And then nicknaming him Lucifer, which, as you all know, means light. Well, I guess you know the rest of the story. <laughs> Lucifer ran wild in the garden, and things ain't been the same since. <laughs> yeah, that was some of my grandma's humor. But you know what? I, that's a great story, but I kind of wanted to get, get away from all of that, you know? I, I, I wanted to do something, something bigger, um, sewing, cleaning, and, and raising someone else's child. That was not going to be the life for me. So when I got news of the march, I didn't walk. I ran. When I, I told my mother and my grandmother that I was going to go during the march, well, my mama just kind of shook her head. My grandmother muttered something about a foolish child going off and getting herself killed. Well, I'd had enough. By that time, I couldn't take it anymore. And so I didn't walk. I ran. <sighs> Big city, bright lights, oh my God. <sighs> Walking down streets I've never seen before. Talking to people I'd rather ignore. Seeing the world go on while I just make my way. Listening to sermons down on bended knee. Searching for truths I will never believe. Seeing the world go on while I just make my way. The rain it pours, the wind it blows, the sun. 
shines, the moon glows, everything in its place, while I just make my way, make my way. And when I got there, everybody was there. I mean, it was as if we were one people, one nation under God. I, I know, I know, I said it all before, but we were all singing songs that everyone knew, like this one. We shall overcome, we shall overcome, we shall overcome someday. Oh, deep in my heart, I do be. That we shall overcome someday. And as I, I, I was singing, someone tapped me on the shoulder and said he heard me singing. And um, he had a, a speakeasy joint down, down the way. And did I want to come be a part of the band? He said that the change was going to come through music and that. I could be the voice of the movement. Ha, 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 that'll show, Mama. Here is someone I don't even know who recognizes my dream. So I went off with Jimmy to his hole-in-the-wall speakeasy. I mean, he was kind of good-looking and sweet-talking. I mean, what's a girl to do, right? I mean, who wouldn't follow a man who was sweet-talking, good-looking, and understood her dream? Spread the news, we paid our dues, won't sing the blues, it's gonna be different, it's gonna be easier, now that I'm with you, can I get a witness, can I get a witness, can I get a witness, as God On the other hand, on the other side, uh, the speakeasy was kind of a, well, it kind of stunk. <laughs> and the musicians that he had, well, I'd heard better players, you know, back down in the South. But you know what? I was in love. <laughs> Well, one day, Jimmy came home, had this weird kind of look at his face, and, and he said, you know something? We're going to Chicago. That's where it's happening. And then he kind of handed me this, this, this old beat-up guitar and said, you're going to have to learn to play because those cats down there, they can't play worth a penny. And I, I said, Jimmy, Jimmy, I don't, I don't know how to play a guitar. And he said, I'm going to teach you three chords, and we're going to change the world. Well, that was what I wanted. So we got to Chicago. We got all set up. And we wrote a song to the man who got us this far. Martin's feet touch the ground. Martin's feet touch the ground. You are his better suit on Sunday, searching for a new sound. Martin's feet touch the ground. He danced to the music of a dream. Guitar strumming, banjo plugging, hand clapping, foot stomping music. Of a dream. Martin's feet walk the earth. Martin's feet walk the earth. He wore a hat upon his head, his shoes never saw dirt. Martin in a 
freshly ironed shirt He danced to the music of a dream And guitar strumming, banjo plugging, hand clapping Foot stomping, music of a dream and I gigs um problem was that well most places didn't open until 10 and if we got to play it was around midnight and the pay well when there was pay really didn't amount to much but jimmy ended up taking a, a job down at the factory and i yeah yeah i ended up taking sewing and knitting but we were living the dream <laughs> So much for the change. Spread the news. We'll pay our dues. Won't sing the blues. It's gonna be different. It's gonna be easier. Cause I'm with you. Then they shot Malcolm in 65. Things went on as usual. Then Jimmy came home early from work a little few years later and, and he just looked at me. And then he said, they shot him. They, they shot who? I mean, Malcolm had already been dead. They shot Martin. I mean, well, Malcolm, Martin, they, he, he, what did he do? He, he preached peace and, and love and, 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 and nonviolence. And Jimmy just kind of laughed at me and said, silly girl, he stood up for himself. No black person gets to do that in this world and live. I kind of stared and I, I, I didn't know what to do. And Jimmy just looked at me and said, I'm getting out of here. Are you coming with me? Well, no, Jimmy. What about our dream? I still have our dream, you know, to change the world through music. Well, you better wake up. 
He packed his bags, left that night. You know, I, I did the gig without him, but it, it just wasn't the same. In the aftermath of the King assassination, riots broke out all over the country. Chicago itself experienced 125 fires. 210 buildings were damaged, and there was over $10 million in damages across the city. That was 1968 prices. <laughs> The riots that broke out across the country were labeled the King Assassination Riots or the Holy Week Riots. But yeah, it was one hell of a Holy Week. Over a hundred in American cities broke out in riots. There had been nothing like it since that last Civil War. Well, you know, after a week or so, I'd had enough, and I, I had to leave Chicago. So I picked up what I needed, and, and I left Chicago for Detroit, headed for a new city, you know, change the tune, change the story. <laughs> Here we go. Okay. Walking down streets I've never seen before Talking to people I'd rather ignore Seeing the world go on while I just make my way All I want to do is dance Spend my life making wild romance No thought of what was is will be And when I got there, I got all settled in, and of course, I went looking for work, and I ran into this club, and there was this woman named Brenda. She was kind of a redheaded piano player. Well, they were looking for a singer. They were looking for a black singer. But they were trying to break into some other kinds of clubs. We kind of sized each other up, and you know, then I sang for her. <clears throat> Pours, the wind it blows, the sun shines, the moon glows, everything in its place while I just make my way, make my way. And then after I sang, she, she introduced herself. I'm from Macon. <laughs> well, we hit it off right away. I mean, okay, we were both from the South, Macon, Georgia, but of course from different sides of the tracks. But, you know, we became, we became friends, and somehow, somehow she was sort of oddly familiar. Then one night, I heard her singing this song.
brother used to sing that song to me. Well, I'm sick of being true. She said she made I'm it up. I'm sick of marrying white. So how does I Brenda will know it? Live like a thief down in the belly of the night. This world was never true to me. This world has left me to my fate. Now I'm standing at the altar Don't know for what it is I wait And now I I am the widow of this world How did she know that song? Yes, I that song oh well from way back when I was a child back in Megan yeah our maid used to sing it she wouldn't sing it when mom was around though I remember one time she started singing it. I made her teach it to me we were having a great time singing then my mother walked in about firing her. Oh. She gave me a good whipping that day. I, to this day, I can't figure out why she didn't like it. <laughs> but I knew. I knew right away. Hey, Brenda, do you know this one? I learned this down south too. <laughs> Got the first verse. Wash my feet in the muddy Mississippi. Left my troubles by a riverside. Wash my feet in the muddy Mississippi. I'm gonna let my spirit fly. Traveling, traveling. That's what my grandmother used to say our people did really well. Traveling. She said that's why they chained us. Not to, not to, not to, not to contain our bodies, but to enslave our spirits. Yeah. 
It was the days before mass media and the internet. <laughs> but um, I'll never understand if she knew that, why, when I told her that I was going to march for freedom, she just shook her head. I was thinking on that. And then I remembered the story that she told me about our people and traveling. Them. Once upon a time, we lived free somewhere. Somewhere where the honey was sweet and we grew strong. Then one day, the, the famine came and, and we moved to another land where the honey was still sweet. The honey further strengthened our bodies and made us strong. Too strong, some thought. They took our strength. They enslaved our bodies. I mean, they took away our spirits. After a while of the oppression, the body becomes weak, and the mind begins to believe the oppressor's lies. So, on the long walk over the mountains, in order to procure supplies for the masters, some of us, many of us, the strong ones and some of the weak ones, chose not to return. We traveled on until we came to another land where the honey was still mm, sweet. The honey further strengthened our bodies and freed our minds, and we were free, free to stay or free to go. And we chose, we chose to do both. Some of us stayed and some of us traveled north, south, east, west, but everywhere we went, Thelma, everywhere we went, we became strong on the land and the sweetness of the honey. Then one day, one day, messengers came. Messengers came with news that we were loved and remembered by our God. Messengers came with news begging us to come home. But with our new laws and being remembered by our God, we felt safe where we were. We chose not to return. Perhaps not our wisest choice, because after a while, the body longs for the feel of the original earth under her feet, and for the smell and the taste of that original honey. And so we took what we needed, our love of God, our desire to be home, and our longing for the sweetness of the original honey. And we began that long walk home. You know, sometimes I think the idea of longing and, and traveling, it, it's the same, right? It's the same as that searching for God. That's what she was trying to tell me. My, my grandmother, she passed away a few years ago. I, I didn't make it back for the funeral. <laughs> I was too busy changing the world.
Well, things were changing. Brenda and I continued our journey on. Well, now we were, we were playing clubs in New York City. <laughs> it was the beginning of the 80s, and you know, Brenda had gone to college before, but now here in New York, she became a full-time feminist scholar. <laughs> I mean, she, she, she marched for, 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 oh, I don't for now, Planned Parenthood, and, and, and went door to door just trying to get people to understand the importance of abortion rights. She was getting high off of her politics. <laughs> but I was kind of losing sight of my dream. I mean, things were changing so fast, and <sighs> there was less pay, fewer gigs, younger singers. So much was going on in the world, and I like I was just getting by. Why was I born to be me? Fighting every day just to breathe. night after a few drinks <laughs> Brenda loosened up a little bit <laughs> she told me the story that her mother always told her about her daddy it went something like this Brenda she would say Brenda Brenda you know I love you child 
I do. <laughs> but sometimes when I look at you, all I see is him. Did I ever tell you that your daddy was a dark man? His eyes were so dark. His skin was so soft. I will kiss the lips, he'd say. And I will kiss the lips again. And he would. Those kisses, you were the result of those kisses. You were our gift to the world. But then one night, I, I, had, I had this dream, and, 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 and everything changed. See, I, I dreamed that I was, in, I was in a dark forest. <laughs> And all these eyes were staring at me. I couldn't see them, the eyes, but they were there. So I started to run to get out of the forest. No, 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 it was a swamp. It was a swamp. And, and I started to run. I saw the river, and I knew that if I could get to the river, I would be OK. But as I was running, the swamp, the ground, it all turned to faces, white faces with blue eyes and, and, and the faces they, they were they were biting at me they were eating my feet and grabbing at my legs and and and, and grabbing my breast and I, I, I couldn't scream I couldn't scream and, and so I, I died I, I died my soul left my body and I melded with the light. Uh, no, the dark. The light and the dark. <laughs> my God, my God, my goddess, my daughter, why have you abandoned me? I have lived my life torn between my color, my world, and the color and the world of the man that I loved. The man that they killed for their rape. Brenda, you are all that I have left. I mean, just because I no longer laugh or cry, that's no reason not to love me, is it? Brenda would always end her story there. And she would say, I remember the moratorium. I remember women wearing their bras, marching for the equal rights. I was at the I felt like I made a difference back then. Mm. But now, the 21st century is still not. <laughs> yeah. 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 You know, now in this new century, America. America has just gone back to her old ways. Do I list the names of those that have died? There's too many. Or the cities where people have died. No, there's just, there's just too many. They did stop shooting us for a while. I mean, I mean, after Malcolm Martin, I mean, really, who was there to shoot? Jesse tried. Angela tried. Shirley Chisholm, do you remember her? <laughs> she ran for president. Yeah. Of course, there was Barack Obama, <laughs> and now Kamala Harris. So it's kind of different, isn't it? I mean, Black Lives Matter, it's a worldwide movement. I mean, bringing attention to how people of color are oppressed all over the entire globe. I, 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 I yeah. <laughs> the revolution, the change, is it any closer than it was 60 years ago? 
Or is it like they say, history just repeats and repeats and repeats? Yeah. Oh, <laughs> did you know that in 2020, there was an anti-lynching bill in the House, in the Congress? Yeah, it didn't pass. <laughs> you know, uh, uh, a few years back, I, I got a letter from my mother. She changed. <laughs> she changed. She's no longer a teacher. No, she's a preacher. <laughs> Started her own church. In the envelope was a picture of me and Jimmy. <laughs> from back in our Chicago days. It seems that after he left Chicago, he made his way on back down south, singing in different clubs. But when he got to Macon, he looked up my mother, rented a room from her, did some extra chores around the house, played some joints while he was down there. I guess he was still kind of like family. Well, my mother actually wrote to tell me how he died. She found him out in back of our house, hanging from a tree. <laughs> she said, you know, he died from embarrassment of being all naked in front of the world. But I knew, I knew. He died trying to live free in America. There were two other pictures in that envelope. One was a picture of a little girl and, and her daddy. And on the back of the picture, my mother had written, you and your daddy. And on the other picture, it was a picture of another little girl and the same man. And on the back of that was written, your daddy and your sister, Brenda. I gave that picture to Brenda. We really were family. You know, all these old memories, they kind of got me all worn out. I can't even remember. Did I answer the question? You know, the one about being African-American? Well, let me take this opportunity to speak for everyone. If you shoot us, we bleed, just like you. If you hang us, we break, just like you. And if you attack us, we hurt, just like you. And if you're gonna say, all lives matter, do you mean that all lives matter equally? Because somehow I just feel that to you, our lives matter less. Martin had a dream, it got him shot. My Jimmy had a dream broke his neck. I had a dream. I wanted to change the world through music. I wanted to have my voice heard. I wanted to be seen as a person, not a gender, not a race. Just Thelma. I guess that was just too big of a dream, huh? You know, you know, the poet, Alan, Alan, Alan Ginsberg, Ginsberg, he wrote a poem, and one of the lines was, America, I've given you everything, and now I am nothing. Well, I can't stand for that. That's not freedom. There's just too many, too many, too many prayers unheard, too many dreams deferred. We, we, we trip, 
we stumble, until we fall, we sit and wonder. Then we hear the call to stand, stand, stand for freedom. There's just too many prayers unheard. There's just too many dreams deferred. We trip and stumble until we fall. We sit and wonder. Then we hear the call to stand for freedom. Without the dark, you won't know night. And only love can bring that light. Is there a choir of heavenly hosts who will sing for souls, souls who are lost? Let them stand. 